Hi, I'm Mike at Cleveland Aircraft Tool, and I wanted to give a quick follow-up video to our 2013 July tool chat where we talked about countersink cutters. Now, the reason is the camera didn't focus very well, and I wasn't able to really show what I wanted to show here. So what I have here is single flute cutters. The single flute cutters, or sometimes they're called high hook cutters, have a single cutting flute uh, right here, 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 and that's created by a hole drilled uh, kitty corner through the countersink itself. The cutters themselves, if you look at from the end, you can see that they're shaped on kind of a conical machine, so only this, this cutter area, the, the very edge that is cutting on the aluminum, is what's touching the edge of the hole. So as that rotates it around, it peels off that uh, that chip creating a really nice smooth uh, countersink because it's always touching the material and always in one spot. Also the conical shape tends to hold it really really well in the center and then of course the pilot is what keeps it centered in the hole so you do want to use the right size pilot for the hole that you're using. Now you can see here that the, the tip is cut away quite a bit that hole actually goes through the pilot especially on these small ones so you do have to be careful not to get a side load or uh, you don't want it to be in a hole and, and then get it cocked over because it will break the tips off, especially these little number 40s. And that's why a lot of other companies don't sell them. Um, it's just a, a fairly high failure rate, but we think it's important to, to be able to do the best quality work you can. Now, of course, the other type of countersink cutter is the three flute that you see in most places. It's um, the commonly used aircraft aluminum countersink cutter. They they are cutting on all three of these edges. If this was placed into a cone, all three of these edges would be touching the cone at the same time. So they're, what's happening is unless you put enough pressure on these, then it's kind of bouncing around and choosing which which flute to cut on. So here I have a sample that I've prepared. So what you end up doing is you press very hard into the material to get it to cut. Otherwise it's, like I said, bouncing around on those three flutes. So one of the other things that I wasn't able to show in the previous tool chat, the July 2013 tool chat, is um, actually countersinking. I, I showed it but the resolution was just not usable. So you can go back and watch that if you want. It's from about 17 minutes to about 22 minutes into the tool chat. So what I'm going to do here is I have a three flute cutter set up that I'm going to um, dimple or going to countersink this piece that I've prepared. So let me refocus the camera a little here. There we go. And I'll go ahead and do that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning it fairly slow and pushing, pushing fairly hard. Now if I was using a cordless drill, this would be easier. Again, it would be easier if I was using a cordless drill to control my speed. So, and the, the torque on the cordless drill is obviously much better than on the air drill. So now I'm changing countersinks here in the background. I'm changing actually countersink cages. I like to leave one set up for um, a number 40 and then change it for everything else. But in this application, I have one set up for a, a number 30 with a single flute and the other one, can't turn it, there we go, number 30 with the high hook or, sorry, one with a single flute and one with a three flute. So this I'm going to turn faster and push very, very lightly on because they the single flute does want to bite into the material more. Try and position it so you can see. Now, oh, I don't have it set very deep. That surprised me. Hold on just a second here. Probably, I'm using the cage for the number 40 cutter is what's going on here. All right, so let me try again. That 
that certainly did it. Okay, so what I, I should have done on the first time is shown you the chips. What I like to do is, uh, in our machine shop is uh, show our guys the chips. And you can tell a lot by how the tool is cutting by what the chip looks like. This is a very fine chip. Looks, uh, it's like aluminum foil almost. Um, and it's pretty smooth. You, I'm not sure you can tell that with the camera. Let me pick up this one right here and see if I can refocus. Not that close. There we go. So it's pretty smooth around there. Even the, the chip doesn't have much chatter versus some of the stuff that I should have showed before I drilled the or before I deburred the second one. But these chips are heavier that came off the three flute cutter and um, they're just more solid so it's, it's biting that chip and tearing it out more than it is truly cutting it. So now the real money shot, right, is taking a look at the actual countersink. Again, I'm too close. So the one on the right is the one that was done with the three flute. The one on the left was done with a single flute. And I'm, I'm looking at the camera while I'm doing this, and you just can't see it in the camera. I thought you would be able to, but this one has little wavy chatter marks in the bottom where this one here is is more almost like it's been polished. Um, so I wish I could show that better, but anyway, that's the difference between the two different types of countersinks.